the Sal Patera channel. I'm Sal and this is my beautiful wife. Abby. You never learn, you gotta speak up. <clears throat> People are trying to hear you like in China. Hi China. <laughs> Once again, I'm Sal, this is Debbie. We are here and today we're gonna to talk about uh, lots of different cruise ports and places we've been at onboard Carnival Cruise Lines. Now this video is gonna be specific to ports that Carnival stops at or Carnival used to stop at. So let us know in the live chat, first of all, if you can hear us okay, microphone should be okay and working. You could probably turn up your volume a little and just see if we're working. All right, so if you're new to our channel, first, as always, make sure you hit the subscribe button click that little bell notification. That way, every time we upload a new video, whether it's a live video or a pre-recorded one, YouTube will let you know when we uploaded it. Also, um, and I'm not sure why it doesn't show in the live videos, but pretty much every one of our other videos, there is a join button. And if you click that join button, it's a financial commitment of like $4.99 a month. And that supports our channel, allows us to keep making more videos. And for the next 24 hours, if you click that join button and then send me a Facebook message with your name and address, I will be sending you out a free gift. So, hello. Hello. First, I want to thank our friends, Joey and Dave. We are at their home. It is a beautiful beginning of a horrible Ohio winter season, <laughs> um, which is why we cruise a lot this winter. Uh, we will be on the Carnival Elation on November 11th, so if you see us on the Carnival Elation, make sure you say hello. And also, something new for the channel. Um, there's one down there now, but there'll be some Sal Patera channel teeth on Monday, November 16th. You'll find them at the bottom of every single video on my channel. And if you purchase one of our t-shirts and you're wearing it and see us on board your cruise ship, we will buy you a free drink on board. Um, and even if you're not wearing one of the t-shirts, say hi to us. We're not going to buy you the free drink if you're not wearing a t-shirt, <laughs> but we're always happy to stop and say hi when we see you on board or out and about in any of the islands. As we talk today, if you have any questions, Debbie is monitoring the live chat. Uh, we'll try and get to as many questions as you have as possible. Again, if you do a super chat of any amount, it guarantees it because it will highlight your chat on our end and <clears throat> make sure that we see it because lots of people will be chatting. So how do we want to do the cruise ports? Do we want to start kind of north and work our way south? Okay. All right. So let's start with <laughs> the northern cruise ports. Uh, Bermuda, we've never been to. All of our Carnival cruises, we've never been to Bermuda. So we really have nothing to say about Bermuda. Um, but staying north, and I want to start by saying that, um, as you know, the last hurricane that came through completely devastated the Bahamas. It, it's like it came over top of the Bahamas and then just lingered there for a day or two. And there are some Bahama islands, while we're talking about the northern cruise ports, that are just devastated. So there's lots of charities out there to, to give to the Bohemian people to help them rebuild these islands. And I hear that there's another hurricane headed right for them right now. And we actually have a question in regards to that. Uh, Jennifer is asking in the event of a hurricane, if the cruise is canceled, will they let you reschedule, return your money, or do you just lose out? That's a good question, but let, let's finish with supporting Bahamas first, because I, I really think if you have a minute after this video, please go to a local Bohemian charity and, and help them rebuild. Uh, we've been going there for years, but let's talk about hurricanes. Uh, the cruise line is actually under no obligation to refund your money if a hurricane cancels your cruise. That being said, they usually do. But it, it's a really strong reason why I recommend cruise insurance, whether it be through Carnival, or there's also a link down in the comment sections of this video for insuremytrip.com. It actually gives you a discount on your travel insurance and even supports our channel because we do get a commission when you click that link and purchase your travel insurance. So while no, I mean the cruise line's really under no obligation to give you a refund, if your cruise is canceled, they almost always do. Or if your cruise is delayed, usually like if a cruise is out at port and they can't load you in time for your cruise, they normally either offer you a discount or onboard credit or a lot of times even a complete refund if you can't make your cruise due to a weather uh, predicament. And if you do board your cruise and a hurricane is coming to one of your destinations while you're on board, 
the cruise line will almost always, if it's at all possible, sail around the hurricane. We've had that happen to us several times, and we've been about 100 miles outside the hurricane, and the skies are beautiful and bright, and even on the horizon, you can see like the dark clouds. But we have been on cruises as well, where we've been stuck at the Gulf of Mexico while a hurricane came directly over top of us. Um, we were there for the whole thing, four extra days at sea. It took us for the hurricane to get back over us um, and us to get back into New Orleans. And for us, honestly, it was one of the most fun cruises we've ever been on. Um, but a lot of people are afraid of hurricanes. So I definitely, if you're not an experienced cruiser, don't book your cruise if you think there's going to be a hurricane because it is very rocky. It's very wavy. The internet doesn't work. The TV doesn't work. Um, lots of times you're stuck out at sea for days and days at a time. So if you're not an experienced cruiser, I definitely recommend not booking your vacation during hurricane season. And I say that looking at Joey, who's behind the camera, who's going on her first cruise in a long time on the Elation with us in November, right at the end of hurricane season. Um, he's giving me a thumbs up. <laughs> So, um, so for the Bahamas, and it's hard to say this knowing that it's completely <coughs> devastated right now, but it has probably my favorite cruise port and my least favorite cruise port of all of the Caribbean, or one of my favorites rather. I really enjoy Nassau because going to Paradise Island and the shopping district in Nassau is a lot of fun. Plus the Senior Frog, if you're lucky enough to go to Nassau in the evening, that nightclub right at the end of the cruise port, I mean the dance vibes in there are just absolutely unbelievable. What do you think? Um, I probably would agree with that. I remember there's two different Bahama ports that I've Freeport. been to. Freeport, the other one. But I don't, it's been so long since I've been to Bahamas that I can't tell which ones are which. I remember um, the Atlantis. I remember going That's over there and having fun there. And it's, if you want to take the cab ride over there, it's definitely worth it, you know, just to, if you don't want to participate in, you know, all the water activities and stuff, just to go over and see the aquarium. Um, and there is a small charge to get in and see the aquarium at Paradise Island, and the cab ride is only 4 or $5. Definitely worth seeing if you go to Nassau. And Freeport, while it's probably been 20 years since I've been there, it's probably my least favorite port in all of the Caribbean. While they've probably built it up, and after the hurricane, maybe not so much anymore, um, it was definitely just a port that it just didn't seem like there was hardly anything to do there. Um, other than a couple shopping districts that were way off the beaten path and very small, just no real desire to go back to Freeport. I do remember one of them had a lot of little huts that we went into. That was Nassau. And that was fun. So, so that's uh, the Bahamas. So let's work a little bit south and we'll start on the east and talk about um, another favorite cruise port of ours. Probably was my favorite cruise port. We were even thinking about moving there until unfortunately they got devastated by a hurricane. And that would be St. Martin. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um... St. Martin was a very fun port. It was. Um, there is more laid back. There's, is, there's shopping to do. There's some really nice stores you can go into. Um, I think you definitely really enjoyed St. Martin more than I did. St. <laughs> Martin has a great beach and a shopping district. It's kind of over the, the bay where you can watch the cruise ships, but it's also got probably one of the most unique experiences anywhere in the Caribbean. And it's about a 35 to 40 minute cab ride away, and that would be Maho Beach. Oh, yes, um, that, was, that was enjoyable, I'll give you that. Maho <laughs> Beach is the only beach in the world where the runway to the Julian Airport literally is right at the beach. So the planes, when they land, are literally like you could toss up a quarter and probably hit the fuselage. And we're talking big 747 jets. Um, well, there's people standing there and they're literally holding onto the fence for dear life because when they take off, the wind is so strong. If you don't, you're going to go swimming. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty intense. I'm going to re-upload this video in a couple of days and I'll, I'll put a little, fill, a little footage of Maho Beach in there. But if you haven't been to St. Martin and you're planning a trip there, I strongly recommend going to Maho Beach. There's a little restaurant right there. And mm -hmm. I mean, there's just nothing like it. I mean, you think these 747s are going to hit you. There's, the wheels are just like three or four feet from your head when, they, when they're landing. It's just unbelievable. Um, again, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section. We will try to get to them. If you want to guarantee we see them, do a super chat of any amount. Not only does it support our channel, but it will highlight your question and guarantee that we see it. We do have a question about St. Martin. Paul is asking if it's true that St. Martin is very expensive. I wouldn't say it's any more expensive than any of the other Caribbean ports. I, 
I think to live there might be a little more expensive. And we were actually talking about moving there for a while. Um, but as far as a tourist, no, I wouldn't say it's really... I think most of the Caribbean ports that the cruise ships pull into, you're going to find for the tourists are going to be normal tourist prices. You're not going to find anything that's going to, at least in our opinion, anything that's really outrageously different from one port to the other. <clears throat> what was Paul's last name? Is that my friend, Paul? I think so. Paul Callahan? Yep. I was just talking to Paul a little while ago on Messenger. Hi, Paul. <laughs> Any other questions? I don't see any just yet. All right. So let's talk about some of the other ports near there. Uh, we will talk about, um, where was it we got your ring? St. Kitts. Mm -hmm. St. Kitts was a lot of fun. Um, we've only ever been there one time. I loved it, and I would love to go back. I definitely would. We'd have to find dog food. We would have to find dog food, and we would have to find those cute little monkeys that sat on our hands with little <laughs> diapers on them. They were so cute. <laughs> there, there's a lot of monkeys in St. Kitts, and when you get to the cruise port, there are people there offering pictures with monkeys for a small donation. And I think I have one with one sitting on my head, and you have one on your hand, and they do. They wear little diapers. There's like little little children running around the port. And there's also wild dogs. And when we go to a port and we see wild dogs, we usually spend like half of our time trying to find looking a local store, store <laughs> to so find, we dog, can food. find dog food to help feed them. Yeah, yeah. We, we're, we're definitely dog lovers. Um, the one thing I, I, I did learn a mistake in St. Kitts, while it was, it's still nice because we enjoyed it, it's something that I, I learned a lesson on. I would say we learned a lesson on it, but I wouldn't not, I mean, I. I I'm glad we I, bought it. I don't want to say I don't. I wouldn't do it again, but I'm. I don't regret getting. I would buy it from when, when you're on a cruise ship, and those of you who are experienced cruisers, you already know this. The cruise line <laughs> recommends certain stores to buy from, such as uh, Diamonds International and right. things like that in the Caribbean. And these are stores that not only are they chains, and you'll find them all over the Caribbean, like Little Switzerland, but because they give a small portion to the cruise line, you're going to pay slightly more for it. But the cruise line actually backs the product. And when we were in St. Kitts, I bought my wife a Diamond Eternity ring. See? <laughs> and it is a beautiful ring. But we did find when we got back here that the ring is not made perfectly. And we are constantly losing one diamond in that ring. It's one specific one diamond. One specific diamond. And the only reason we know that is because if I go into a tanning bed or anything that has like those kinds of lights, that one diamond stands out from the rest. So <laughs> what we don't know if the one diamond that we're replacing with is a, a great diamond and the other ones are all subpar or vice versa. But we do know that because it's not one of the stores that the cruise line recommended, even though the company did replace the ring once. They did. With another ring that still loses diamonds. Um, because it was a mom and pop shop at the Caribbean, we're kind of at their mercy. Uh, and we've just learned to live with the fact that we're going to have to replace a diamond every year or so out of it. Well, we're, we're now getting it checked every six months. <laughs> yeah. So while we were skeptic to why the cruise line recommends specific jewelry stores, we have come to learn that there is a reason that they do it and respect that reason. Push this up from the light so it doesn't get into the camera lens. Oop, look at that, my big finger. All right, next port would be, let's travel a little bit west, uh, St. Thomas. That's what I was just going to say. Go ahead. Tell us about St. Thomas. I wish I could. <laughs> St. Thomas. I don't remember a whole lot of it, sorry. <laughs> St. Thomas also has a huge shopping district right there at the port. <laughs> My friend Joey behind the camera is making fun of the way I say huge. She's one of those Ohioans who says, huge. <laughs> You know, everybody on my channel is going to be making fun of me about the way I say huge now, right? <laughs> huge. It's huge. U-G-E. Huge. So anyway, there's great shops there at St. Thomas. And what I like about them is Carnival is doing a great thing. And at the same time, something I don't like so much is that a lot of the ports, Carnival is building their own port. And while it's nice because when you get off the ship, there's a pool there and the stores are really nice and you know you're not getting like the mom and pop stores that are going to try and rip you off, it seems like a lot of them look very, very the same. It's almost like the same architect, the same builder went in there and just built a cruise port. I mean, you got the boat, I mean, unless you realize where you're at, the buildings and the atmosphere just are like identical. And that part I don't like. I honestly don't remember much about that port, to be honest with you. Well, that port's not one of those. And then also in St. Thomas, <laughs> 
Come here, bonehead. Come here. <laughs> so what you can't see <laughs> is Joey's son just came out of her house with a huge sign on his chest. Huge. Huge. <laughs> that simply says, Sal sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He'll be starting his own YouTube channel soon and wait till you see what I say about him. He put it on the window. Oh, now it's on the window. <laughs> so also in St. Thomas, you will find on the other side of the island, it's about a 25 minute cab ride away. There are two local beaches. I don't remember the name of them, but they're both great. And then one of the beaches actually has like a miniature sea world attached to it for like 50 bucks. You can go in there and see like some animal uh, shows and things of like that. And it's attached to the beach. Snorkeling in St. Thomas is wonderful. And the weather outside of hurricane season when there's a storm coming through is almost always fantastic. Was it? Pelican. I, I, I might have. Yeah, I was wondering if St. Thomas is that little one that we took off the beaten path and we went snorkeling and we got nosedived by a pelican. That was the one. That, that was, was St. Thomas. a lot of fun. Scary, but fun. <laughs> we have any more questions? You can make it fun of the way I say huge um, yet? No, not yet. <laughs> What a good excursion in Cozumel. Nope, I don't have any questions. Just comments. All right, so let's talk about, I think I, I'm probably missing a port or two. And if I'm missing something and you want to know about it and you want our opinion of it, um, let us know in chat. Like I said, we'll try and get to it. And if you do a super chat, I guarantee we'll get to it. Um, let's talk about Cozumel. Cozumel is one of those ports that like half the cruises to the Caribbean stop in. Um, I love Cozumel. And I got a whole new experience of Cozumel this last time I was there. And it was so much fun. I like Cozumel. We've, I think we pretty much have done just about anything you could think of, you know? I mean, we've done horseback riding in the water. We've that done... was actually in Kalika. Well, okay. I'll give you that one. Um, but from shopping to snorkeling, just to, to renting a Jeep and exploring the island. I mean, I think we've just kind of done a, a good variety of a lot of things there. Yeah, I agree. And, and Cozumel is one of those ports that also has a huge carnival port there and it's not like one of the new ones. Stop. It's not like one of the new ones they're building so it is kind of unique. It's a definitely a Mexican feel. And then if you go outside the port there is a long strip of shopping downtown. Notice I did not see a huge strip of shopping. A long strip of shopping, shopping right along the ocean front downtown and lots of great shops. I will warn you parents <laughs> that if you're traveling with kids um, almost every shop, regardless of how old your kids are, will, at least the jewelry shops, will offer your kids tequila. I remember the kids being like six, seven years old and the shop owners offering them tequila. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I did with my son Dominic um, just a couple of months ago is we rented a Jeep from Alamo right there at the cruise port. Actually, excuse me, we were going to rent the Jeep and then we ended up going with like a dune buggy type car. And it was like less than $100 for the day. And we actually drove the whole perimeter of the island. And along the way, there was all kinds of little huts and shops and, and really inexpensive restaurants. It took us about two hours to travel around the island. We ended up at the long strip up by the water and then had plenty of time at the cruise port as well. And it really made the day go by nicely. It was hot, uh, but, but I, I definitely recommend doing that as opposed to an excursion. And the people at the Enterprise store there are really exceptionally nice. And they have Jeeps and these little like dune buggy type of vehicles. I'm wondering, is, is uh, that where Shellha was? Nope, that's Kalika. Okay, yeah, see, I can't remember all my And items. I don't <laughs> think, and, and Shellha I believe is an excursion that's offered in Cozumel, uh, but it is actually, you gotta take a ferry to get over to the mainland because Cozumel is actually an island off of Mexico. but. Carnival used to stop at a port called Calica, which the city there was Playa del Carmen. I don't believe they stopped there anymore. I have not seen a cruise to Calica in such a long time. I haven't either, and it's a shame because that was, I think, by far one of our favorites for a long I, time. I agree. Very and long time. Playa del Carmen is about an hour south of Cancun, and if you rented a car there and you drove the opposite direction south for about 45 minutes, there's a natural water park called Shellha. Mm -hmm. um, it's like 50 bucks for the day. It includes snorkeling and your lunch and... Uh, poisonous snakes that fall off of trees and almost kill you. <laughs> Land on your head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that. it happened. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't believe Carnival really goes there anymore. So then we work a little bit further south and we go to 
Um, before you yep. go there, I do have a couple comments. I've had a couple people say that they can't find the super chat. I've the super chat is down by the regular chat bar. There should be like a little dollar sign icon. You just click on that and it will allow you to put a dollar amount in and it supports our channel. Um, and I, I think you have to have like payments set up on your Google account. I'm not really sure how it works. I wouldn't have. So, to but you know, <laughs> if you don't, it's not a big deal. We'll still try and get to your questions. But the super chats do, you know, support our channel and help us pay for the equipment it takes to make these videos and go on these trips and share them with you. And if you've seen me on board a cruise ship, you know I cruise a lot. But people always ask me, you know, don't you ever sit down and actually enjoy your vacation? And the answer is, not really. Um, I'm pretty much always with my tripod and my camera, wandering around the cruise ship making videos. Uh, taking you on tours behind the scenes, like on the bridge, and, and there's another sign hanging up. What does it say? He looks, he looks like Groot. 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 G-R-U. I don't know who that is. Joey's sign, son is putting up more signs in the window. I have no idea what Groot looks like, but okay. Despicable me. Despicable me. Oh, you suck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is that like the mini me guy? Remind me not to do any more live <laughs> chats from Joey's house. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna there's, need a, beer there's after a this. saying, payback is, uh, you know, what? I know, right? This is, and, and you're going to be helping him out with yeah, some YouTube th stuff. This is a young out. man who, who is about to partner with me for me to create him a YouTube channel. Uh huh. A gaming YouTube channel. I see. <laughs> so, next chat would be Costa Maya. And, you know, I don't see many cruises going to Costa Maya anymore either. That's when we almost missed a cruise trip that one time early in our cruising career. I do remember a really, that really long, long uh, pier. We were watching a painter. Yep. And our daughter was getting her hair braided. Yep. Well, it's, it's a really long pier, as I said. And at the end of the pier, there's a great shopping area and even a pool. And we haven't been there many years, but one of our trips there, we were watching this guy paint with spray paint in paint cans and my daughter was getting her hair braided and we didn't realize the ship was leaving in like one minute and we looked at the pier which was probably like a half a mile long and <laughs> we just all started running and we literally got to the ship as they started pulling as they, in just, as, just as they were pulling in the ladder and yes for once <laughs> we were those people that everybody were hooting and hollering <laughs> at and screaming run and we did make the ship that but, was before we knew what yes. I mean, what, That know. is definitely a <laughs> lesson learned. We are always back that, an hour early that was now. was one of our first cruises. Yes. Well, let's put it that yes, way. Yes, <laughs> but we were, as our first cruise, we were one of those people. Um, and it was, uh, was a little embarrassing. We do have a super chat. Very cool. Deborah Race. Hey, Deborah, how are you? That's our good friends, Deborah and Marty, down in Florida. Yes. Who we got the opportunity to spend uh, a week with before we came back up to this hideous state. I mean, this beautiful state of Ohio. <laughs> um, and we had an absolutely fantastic time uh, doing the whole Disney World thing. And, and Deborah and Marty were gracious enough to let us stay in their condo down there. And uh, it, was, it was really nice. And we had a great experience. We took them over to... Um, Buca de Beppo for the first time. I put a video time. up on that, a 360 they, video. They loved it. They, they're still putting posts up about that. Yeah, if you haven't <laughs> been to Buca, you got, you got to put a 360 video. It's one of my last videos. And by the way, I'm sorry I haven't been here for a while. I had kind of a health scare coming back from our trip down to Florida. All better now, so you should see a lot more videos coming soon. Um, so let's go further south. If I'm missing any ports, let me know. Um, I think further south from there would probably be Belize. We did have some people ask us about Belize. First of all, I need to let you know that Belize is a tender port that Joey apparently doesn't like because she's giving us a thumbs down. One of our favorite ports, actually. Um, One of, I don't like the fact you have to tender to it. I'm not big on, on what are they, water? They're not tenders no more. They're, Excuse they're me, they're water, water something. shuttles. Water shuttles. Water. They've now. renamed the tender yes. system to water shuttles. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I love that port. Um, I always enjoy the shopping there they have really nice stuff and the prices are very very reasonable um our daughter however i think is one of her least favorite ports you know every time she goes there she tends to it's very get warm under the weather really. um one of the things i like about it it's not like a traditional port the actual port is very small there's very little shopping there probably like 10 stores but you actually get to right. walk around belize city and see how other people live and go to like local shops where the locals shop at and i always find that kind of neat you can forget to keep switching up. I am up. Um, 
I always find that kind of fun. On this last trip, my son and I actually did the zip line and cave tubing adventure. And uh, we've been, I, I, Debbie and I have wanted to do the cave tubing for probably 20 years and I finally took the plunge and did it. And um, I wasn't impressed really. I thought I'd be really impressed with it. The main thing I, the two main things I, I didn't like about it was literally everybody you interacted with had their hand out for a tip. The person who shuttled you to the bus at the port wanted a tip. The driver of the bus wanted a tip. The tour conductor on the bus wanted a tip. The guy who put your life vest on to go to Tave, Cave to him, he wanted a tip. The guy who put your life vest on or your zip line vest on, they wanted a tip. The guy who led you through the caves wanted a tip. The DJ wanted a tip. The person who rented you your locker <laughs> wanted a tip. And it, it, it just got so old with everybody asking for a gratuity on an excursion that you already paid over a hundred bucks for. Um, that being said, the tubing actually was kind of nice. The zip lining was fun. The bus ride for an hour to get there with almost no air conditioning for me was almost unbearable. On the way home, I really thought I was gonna pass out when I got off that bus. So it's definitely something I wouldn't do again, but we're typically not really excursion people. My friend Joey in the back, I probably can't hear the mic, but, but she went to the Mayan ruins. And yeah, I think that's one of the things I really don't like about the excursions. They pack you, most of ports, or a lot of ports, pack you in these really old school buses that are from like the 1970s and have one little tiny air conditioner on the front. And for me, you know, I'm a, a fat guy from Ohio. Um, just, just absolutely, I don't laugh. Absolutely unbearable. I'm not laughing. I'm right there with you, only I'm not I guy. I don't <laughs> think so. Um, but again, we're not really excursion people. We much rather we just get off the bus and explore on our own. Oh, you know where we missed? We missed the stop where you get to stop, and this is probably going to cause this channel to get demonetized. Hmm. We always stop at this one port when we go there, and you have to stop and get yourself some big black dick. Grand Cayman. Grand Cayman. Grand Cayman is... Now you can all get your minds out of the gutter because yes. Big Black Dip is actually the name of the pirate who discovered right. the island and Big Black Dick hot sauce right. is about the best <laughs> hot sauce I've ever had. So when you go to Grand Cayman, you've got to get yourself some Big Black Dick hot sauce. Not only will you enjoy it, <laughs> but it does make a really cool memento at your house. If you watch real closely in my studio, I actually have a bottle of hot sauce on one of the You do. And uh, Grand Cayman is also where you can take a taxi cab ride over and actually go to hell. That's correct. And it is something to see <laughs> once. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's, it, hell is... A little town in Grand Cayman, they actually have their own postmark seal, so they you can do. send back a postcard from hell. And, and you can get t-shirts that say that I've been to hell and back. And, and they, they used to have an old man there who dressed as the devil, but I haven't did. seen him in a long time. I, Maybe I he's, you know, that. not with us anymore. That might be. Which means he's probably, you know, what, what's over there. Well, if, he, if you dress as the devil every day in your whole life, you probably <laughs> think that's going to where you end up. But it's also like this giant, like, I don't know if it's tar pits, but when you look out, when you go on the porch and you look out, you see this, like, field of, like, what well, you would picture hell would look like. Yeah, I, I mean, it's kind of hard to describe. Yeah, I, when I re-upload this video, I'll put a, an image <laughs> on the screen. And I think the other thing that I remember most, and this is going to make us look really, really dumb, just so you know, <laughs> and you already know what I'm talking no, about. No, I don't. <laughs> One of the first times we went there, we had actually found numbers, house numbers. <laughs> uh, now he knows. <laughs> and for the life of us, neither one of us could remember our house number. And it gets worse. It does get worse. And we sat there and we looked through all these numbers and we got four Couldn't numbers. remember our own address. And we thought, okay, that's it. And they're like, no, wait a minute. That looks like somebody's phone number. And we're like, oh, yeah, that's someone's But we figured number. it out and bought the numbers, sort of. Well, go ahead. Explain that one. <laughs> so we remembered our address, and we bought the numbers, and we figured these are going to look great on the side of our house. And then we got home and realized that the last two numbers were, in fact, not our house numbers, but the last two <laughs> are our phone numbers. So I went online, determined to get the right numbers. I found the store. And I was able to place an order online for the correct house numbers. And I got them. They sent them to me in the mail. And they look great. 
sitting in our back garage. Yes. They never made it onto our house. <laughs> they're, they're still in a bag somewhere. But they are very cute. They are very <laughs> unique. They're very tropical. And we both loved them. Enough to the point where we actually went back and bought the correct numbers. But See, and this is why I needed the light on the camera. Look how dark it's getting out here. You guys probably can't see it because we have one of the studio lights on top of the camera. But it's actually getting pretty, pretty dim out here light-wise. So let's move further south while we still have some lights. Before we do that, let me talk about what I talked about at the beginning. Um, first of all, if you're new to our channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Click the little bell notification. That way YouTube will let you know every time we go live or open a new video for upload. Mm -hmm. Also, on anything but the live videos, you can click the little join button if you want to support our channel. It's $4.99 a month. And for that, you'll get some special cruise offers. Um, once a month, you'll get a private video that's just for um, our subscribers. And we even give some gifts out to the people who join our channel as well. So if you want to support our channel that way, you can. If you do hit the join button in the next, I'm going to make it 48 hours, send me a message on Facebook with your name and address, and we're going to send you out a special prize or a special gift, or rather carnival gift, logo gift. If you don't want to join, if you do a super chat during this video of any amount, really, it'll guarantee we see your credit or your, your chat, and we will answer your question and acknowledge you. Uh, but if you do a super chat of $5 and more or more, we're going to send you out a carnival logo item as well. Somebody, she's laughing at something. I got to turn and look because of the last comment. Hmm. <laughs> Somebody actually sent a comment saying, how many people noticed the front of the grill? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to look. I wasn't aware of that one. Let's go look. <laughs> He's not dead no more. Dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, nice. <laughs> Oh, he's dead again. He's dead again. <laughs> All right, so let's go further back down the Caribbean. Any questions we have to answer first? Um, <laughs> I don't see any as far as, you know, basic is what we're, our topic is as of right now. There's some that okay. go a little off topic, but okay. we're not. Cool. All right, so let's go further south and talk about, um, let's start with Aruba. <laughs> Which, um, well, let's talk about what you didn't one. like about Aruba, <laughs> and then I'll talk about what we like about Aruba. What happened to you? I love the shopping there. Let's put it that way first, okay? <laughs> it's a very nice, very quaint little town. It's actually not even really that little. Um, the people there are amazing. Everybody is super sweet, very nice. Um, we decided to, again, even though we don't do shore excursions, we did decide to do a shore excursion where we did um, Segway and Snorkel. I'm trying to remember. I think you did the Segway first. We did. We? Okay. And <laughs> I wish you would put that video up because it is it, as bad as it was and as, as scary as it was, it was looking Let's back say... on it, it was the funniest thing ever. Let's just say don't use your GoPro and be fiddling around with your GoPro well, while riding you're a riding a Segway on the on a beach. beach. <laughs> because you will hit a rock and go flying through the air. And crack your and helmet you, on you, another rock. You think I would have learned the first time it happened. Well, the first time it was just a little rock and it didn't really, it just kind of threw you off balance and you caught your balance and you were good. The second time not so much and then it, cracked the whole helmet in half we went back and we watched the video and you, all you hear is i'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was the funniest thing when we watched it back um but then after that we um went to where they were going to do the snorkeling and we went into the water my biggest advice to anybody who's going to go into the water in aruba and this applies to anywhere in the caribbean well yeah i would agree with that Make sure you have water shoes or a spare set of tennis shoes or something that you can wear in the water to protect your feet. Or come home to Ohio in the middle of winter <laughs> and try to explain to your podiatrist how to get sea urchins out of your feet. That was interesting. They were literally standing in the hallway. Googling it. Going like this, looking on their phones, trying to figure out how to do that. Yeah, we could have done that's it at what home. happened. I actually stepped on a sea urchin and got several little, there. I don't know what they're Arms. called. Spine. Spine things all throughout my foot. So I had these little black things sticking out everywhere. 
And it, it, it didn't ruin her vacation, but it definitely made her vacation painful for the, the remainder of the trip. So anywhere in the Caribbean, go to Walmart or wherever, buy a $5 pair of water shoes if you plan on going in the ocean because there are sea urchins all over the Caribbean. And they're and, hidden in like rocky areas yeah. apparently. And if you step on one, believe me, it's not a unique story. It is no fun at all. Um, and they're huge. <laughs> Huge. You did have somebody comment on that one. They spelled it a couple different ways on that. <laughs> it's U-G-E. I'm from New Jersey. It's U-G-E. And it's, and it's not water. It's water. 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 Yeah. Like kind of like toilet? No, we say toilet <laughs> like everybody else. Um, we do have a question of, is it uh, mobility scooter friendly? And I I believe that it is. Yeah, there's a lot of shopping and stuff right there in that area. Everything is within walking distance. Um, I so. find pretty much everything on a cruise ship is really handicap friendly. As a matter of fact, um, if you don't have a mobility scooter, there's lots of companies out mm -hmm. there that will actually rent you a scooter. <coughs> they deliver it right to the cruise ship, so it's there when you get on. And when you get off, you leave it on the cruise ship, and they come and pick it up for you. And, I mean, there's lots of elevators, you know, usually three banks of them, forward, midship, and aft on the, on the cruise ship. Um, I find almost everything is very uh, handicap accessible. Even getting on and off the ship, it's almost always ramps. And if they don't have a ramp, they'll give you an alternate access or the crew will actually lift your chair down for you or your scooter down for you. Um, well, plus not only that, if there's like a long pier or, you know, a long walk or whatever, they usually have like little rickshaws, rickshaws tender type things, something like that. And they're usually that'll... free, just give them a tip. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's usually very handicap accessible. So then we'll go a little further south and we'll talk about to the place I'm no longer welcome and that would be uh, Carousel. We actually had some questions on that one. Cool. We loved Carousel. Remember, we've been there several times and it's one of our favorite ports in the Caribbean. We it were, is. Until we were there with Deborah and Marty, they jinxed us. You know, it seems they seem <laughs> to keep coming back up in this conversation. <laughs> um, I think the most, there's two things that we actually really, really enjoy about that port. Um, and it's another place we were actually considering moving. It is. Um, this port, well, one place is there's an, a rather large hotel in the little pathway that you're walking from where the ship is docked. I think it's called the Renaissance. Over to the main shopping center. Um, and in there, I believe it's what, like 10 or $20 a 25, day? 25 I believe. You can go in there and pay it, like th that set amount and you can utilize their pool. Now, it's the most beautiful infinity pool, is, pool ever. Yes, it is an infinity pool, and it literally looks like it dead ends into the ocean, and the ship is right there on the other side. So the view is spectacular. They have a bar there. They have food and everything. You can use their lounge chairs and the umbrellas and everything, and it's definitely something that we have done in the past, and it's something we it's really enjoy. And it doesn't cost a lot of money unless, you know, it's something you want to, you know, if you're a big drinker and you want to spend the money or if you want to get food there or, or things like that. And then you also have the port itself. The port is actually divided in two. You have the actual port where there's tons of like upscale shops and there's a casino there. Um, kind of the more expensive, you like think of almost like mall shops, uh, only they're in an outdoor, an outdoor environment. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to the river, there's actually a, a bridge that it's hard to explain. The entire bridge turns. The entire bridge is on like and it's a walk flotation. bridge, it's not a, it's not like a drive bridge. It's like a flotation bridge. device. It's got like, like 50 I boats. think, well, no, we, we looked it up and we, and we counted them once. And I think it was like 13 boats that were literally one, Little two, pontoons. three, and they were all no, like No, it was connected. more than that. It was like 50. I don't think it was that many. I don't remember. I know we just had this conversation not that long ago, and I can't anyway, remember. Anyway, it's about a half a mile. You walk across <laughs> it. It's really cool. And then when you get to the other side, it's almost like a Key West type environment. Um, lots of great Very little similar. shopping uh, shops. There's a... A fresh fish market, it's always fun. You can watch the fishing boats come in and sell to the local uh, local restaurants. They're actually, one of the places where they throw the fish. And in fact, I'm going to say one thing before you that you'll actually pass before you get to the fish market. Um, as soon as you get off the bridge, right there on your, if you're walking out on your left-hand side, they have this giant, I don't know if it's metal or what, but it's like this giant iron metal thing. or iron heart. And you can get a lock. You, a lot of people bring them with you, and they are actually engraved on it. Some people buy locks there, and they write on it. And um, you just basically, you and your 
significant other will go there and put a lock on it together and it signifies that you guys were there together we were like is, one of the first ones we were we yeah, actually have we actually have pictures of us putting it on there and there was maybe only like 10 or 15 locks on there and we just went back within the Thousands. last year and it was so hard to figure out which one was ours because there was so many. It's like a three-dimensional art sculpture, and rather than being a solid surface, it's made of like little iron rods all over the place. It's actually really cool. When I reel, I'll put a picture of it up. It's, it's actually really so. Bring a lock if you go there. Um, Saint Martin or, or, or Carousel was a lot of fun until we went there this last time, and we witnessed a uh, a protest for the from the locals, and it kind of scared us and. While everyone else was ducking for cover that was with us, I pulled out my video camera and put a video online that kind of created a huge controversy, huge controversy with the locals. Um, and I got so much hate mail, including a message from somebody who claimed to be the prime minister. And he said, may I quote, I don't think I'll ever forget it. He invited me to never return. <laughs> So well, I don't know whether that's... we tried uh, to do the right thing. We tried to ask them, you know, what they were saying because they were speaking, I think it's in Talamonian or something like that. It's and like, they didn't want to tell it's us. It's like two languages and they kind of combine it. It's, I don't know much so about it. So what had happened in, in brief synopsis, we're in the tourist district and in the main tourist district, there is their parliament <laughs> building. And we're doing our shopping along with, you know, thousands of other tourists and all of a sudden we start hearing these bangs, which to us sounded like they might... Excuse me, they might have been gunfire. They were like pops. Like pop sounds. Yeah. And then we seen this mob of locals just, just bombard <laughs> us. With and megaphones. With megaphones and screaming and hollering. And then the police started coming with sirens. And the tourists, we didn't know what was going on. And, and in hindsight, maybe we didn't have the right to know what was going on because it was a local protest. But then again, they, they decided it to right do it in the middle, in the the middle of the tourist area. district. When they, knew when they was rely ships. on tourists and they knew multiple ships were in town. And then afterwards, while they were all standing around on their megaphones, there were people from Parliament there, there were police officers, there was the gentleman who I thought was leading the protest. And I went up to each of them on camera and tried to get them to explain to us what was going on because they weren't speaking English at all. And none of them, while a couple of them admitted they did speak English to somebody I was with, to me, they pretended they didn't speak English enough only to say that it was none of our business. And as a tourist, we kind of felt, you know, that they chose to scare the tourists while we were there. They chose not to do it in English, which is the right. But at the same time, you know, I didn't feel I was wrong for putting it on my YouTube channel either. Anyway, I got a lot of hate mail. And like four days later is when they had the fight with Venezuela over their protest. And, and I had people claim that I had a part of that. And I don't know. It's still a beautiful island. I definitely recommend going there. Hopefully you won't have the same experience that we had on the last one because we've been there many times and have always had a great experience. And it's a port that I would definitely like to go back to. I think I might be a little uh, hesitant to well, go back. Well, I don't back. know if they let us go back now. I mean, that's but just it. But if, <laughs> might I, not be able to get off the ship. If, if they would allow us to go back, I think I would because it is a very nice port. It I is very I see clean. a super chat. We do have a super chat. Uh, just Me Taxi Lockwood. And they are asking, what is the email address to claim their Super Chat t-shirt? Uh, just send me a message through Facebook. Just look up Sal Patera. Send it through my personal page, not the Sal Patera channel page. Um, that one tends to get clogged. Uh, but my personal page, just send me your name and address, and I will confirm it back to you. And he does have one more question. Um, it's not a t-shirt, though. The Super Chat is a prize. Um, a Carnival logo gift. The t-shirt okay. will be located on Monday at the bottom of every one of my videos. And if you purchase one of our t-shirts, and they are pretty cool t-shirts, um, and I'll be updating them regularly, <laughs> and you see me on board wearing a t-shirt, uh, I will buy you a drink and, and hang out with you. But for the Super Chat, we're gonna send you a Carnival logo gift. And his other question was, is uh, where were we when on the, they did the Cannonball Run thing in Florida? And that was actually in Clearwater, Florida, and we were at the Fusion Cigar Bar. One and of my Lounge. favorite places on earth. I agree. So we're, we're lucky enough to have uh, two good friends, Scott and Nancy, who have a, a beautiful yacht there in the marina, and they allow us to come and hang out on their yacht for probably almost two months this year. Um, and we hang out in Clearwater Beach and, and just have a fantastic time in the Fusion Cigar Lounge. Mm -hmm. um, if you're there, you know, tell them we recommended them because it is definitely a really cool place. Even if you don't yes. smoke cigars, 
they, um, they have a great patio with a bar. They do, and, and it's not just a cigar lounge. A lot of people will go there and, you know, if they just smoke or even if they don't smoke, they'll sit there and they'll have a drink and they'll just talk to locals. And, and this kind of time was really cool. We got to see some really cool Lamborghinis. Uh, what was the one called? Lambo. That's the only Lambro. one I can, Lambro. 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 I'll out. put a link down <laughs> below. They have a YouTube channel. It's called Lambro, and they have the coolest Lamborghini on earth. And you know what's weird about him? I've been kind of watching his channel, and first of all, he's exploding in, in subscribers. But um, they've been like all over the world with that Lamborghini mm -hmm. since we were in Florida. Really? Yeah, they've been to like Australia, and there's a video I think from Germany. I mean, they travel with this Lamborghini. You know how they have multiple Lamborghinis and fly there? <laughs> because they've been like all over the planet touring in their Lamborghini. So Lambros, I want to give you a shout out. Thanks for showing us your car uh, while we were there. And uh, I'm definitely following your channel. I'll put a link down below in my channel. So what other ports do we have down there? Dominican Republic. Several ports in Dominican Republic. Yeah. We are. We're going we to are. Amber Cove in uh in november on, on the elation yes and if my memory suits me correctly is when you first get into that port they actually have a really large pool area to the right mm -hmm. and they have a walk-up bar and in the there pool's in free. the pool they have a uh-oh uh -oh. lost, lost lighting light. changing batteries <laughs> continue as you were um, they do have a viewing section where you can kind of walk up this little tower and kind of just see and look over the whole entire island um, it's really cool and then they have a lot of shopping and stuff to the left um, all kinds of neat little things you can do let there be light and, uh, and the one thing I do remember about that port is that throughout the port they have a lot of unique statues that you can take some creative pictures with I don't remember that that's also where you swim with the dolphins that is where we swam with the dolphins no you swam with the dolphins well I swam with the dolphins with my son I have a video on the channel. I'll link that down below too. Uh, like I said, we don't do many excursions, and this is one that she did with our son. It was the dolphin swim. Uh, there's two of them, right? There's a dolphin encounter and a dolphin swim. Yes. And she did the dolphin swim, and I think it's probably one of the most amazing experiences you've ever had on a cruise. It is. It was. It was definitely worth it, and I would definitely do it again. But I would definitely make sure I wore a one piece if next time. <laughs> Apparently, she lost her bikini. A few times. <laughs> Yeah. Um, we're probably going to do it in uh, November. Yeah. So uh, I definitely recommend that. Even though I didn't do it, I came back and watched the video, which I did upload to the channel. Uh, by the way, if you're watching Dauphin World, that video that you guys used got me hit for a copyright because you guys are using copyrighted music. You're not supposed to. So I didn't remove the music. <laughs> Just to let you know you should fix that in the $150 disc you sell people. <laughs> I believe we should have maybe went down to Honduras because we have some people asking about Honduras. Okay, Honduras. We've only been there once. No, yeah, twice. Yeah, uh, we've been there twice. twice. And um, what I remember is there Rotating. wasn't... I don't believe that there was a lot to do there. I remember we, we rented scooters, which they recommend you don't do that. Yes, I don't recommend you rent scooters. <laughs> we did rent scooters. Um, and we actually took them down to the beach and rode along there. And there's some really neat, cute little... We went little that little, tiny little town on the other side of the island. Yeah. Like one strip of stores. Yeah, and it was really neat. And it had some really neat, cute little shops there. Um, but other than that, the I one remember thing I did that, learn there. That, that two of the other people that were with us... No, I'm sorry. One of the other people that was with us, you and the two kids, did do zip lining there. Right. And that's one thing I did learn in this, and I'm going to give the, the advice to you guys if you're traveling with kids, especially daughters. And, well, they're actually asking about zip line, and that was one of the places that they asked about, and that's why I kind of yeah. brought that and up. And I actually gave this advice to the people when me and Dominic were zip lining, the people that were with us, right. is if you're going with children, and I learned this in Honduras, um, the hard way. Put one parent as the first zip liner and one parent as the last zip liner because what I found out after we got back to the ship is frequently they were hooking my daughter up last. When you zip line, you have like different stops in the canopies as you zip line through. And they were making my daughter go last. And I found out afterwards that the tour excursion guy had a motive for that because pretty much every time he was alone with my daughter, he was hitting on her. Yeah. And she was only like and, 14 and, or 15 and, and at the time. very suggestive, right. Yeah, she was, so she was we, we did learn a lesson. If you're traveling with kids and you're going to do a zip line or really any excursion where you have to take turns, don't mm -hmm. leave your kids behind. Um, even though they're coming immediately afterwards, do one parent and then the kids and then another parent, regardless of what 
they advise you to do, just tell them that that's the most comfortable way that you're willing to do it. Oh, we do have a super chat. Uh, Paul Callahan. Hey, Paul, thank you very much. And I know we had actually talked about him a little bit earlier, but he I, is. Don't, I was talking to one We had, a, we had asked, answered his questions about the medical scooters. Yep. So. And, and the reason I know Paul is if you're currently booked with Carnival and you haven't made your last payment yet and you'd like to have our expertise in your booking, uh, we can actually take that booking over. Nothing changes on your reservation whatsoever. Your pricing stays the same, your cabins stay the same. Any gifts such as onboard credits that the cruise line has offered you, all of that stays exactly the same. The only difference is you get our expertise and somebody to talk to when you may have an issue. We have a lot of pull with the cruise line. Uh, just send me a message at salpatera at gmail.com or give me a call at 330-968-4300. Um, I'm almost always available. Uh, this last month has been a little spotty because I had a health issue, um, but I do have staff as well and we're, we're really always here to help you. So that's 330-968-4300 and I will put that down in the comments down below as well. Again, we don't ever charge you a dime. The cruise line pays us directly and nothing changes on your booking. The only caveat is you haven't, if you've made your last payment, we can help you. At that point, the cruise line owns your booking um, and you really have to stay through them. But when you book through us, you have our expertise, you have um, our <coughs> flexibility. We have some, some liberal payment plans with the cruise line and can, dip, can typically help you a little better than just that Carnival operator when you call 1-800-CARNIVAL. I think we do have some confusion that you should probably re-clear uh, again. Go ahead. Um, a lot of people are saying that they have gotten the Super Chat t-shirt and maybe we can clarify okay. on that a little bit. So more. the Super Chat of $5 or more, send me a message on Facebook through my Facebook group <laughs> with your name and address. That's not a t-shirt. That is a Carnival logo item and that'll go out next week for you. The t-shirts will be uploading to YouTube Monday morning and you'll see them below every one of my videos and you can buy a t-shirt and the t-shirts will be pretty cool and when you purchase a t-shirt if you're wearing that t-shirt and see me on board a cruise say hello and I will be happy to buy you a drink but the super chat's not a t-shirt the super chat is actually a carnival logo item right um, I don't see any other questions as of right now and I think we're out of ports um, Any ports I miss? I'm sure there are. Just can't think of them. What about Caicos Island? Oh, Grand Turk! Yes! One of our favorite yes. ports. How did we <laughs> and we're going that there one? In, we're going there in <laughs> uh, seven weeks. You're welcome. So, a group, and it's probably I, one of our new favorite I ports. Think it, I think if I had to choose any port to go to, that would be one of my top ones. That's where the big margarita bell is. Yes, Grand Turk is a very unique port. When you walk off the ship right there, you're going to find <laughs> probably 30 stores that are great to shop in, all kinds of souvenirs. I really don't recommend going downtown. There's not a lot to see downtown. There's no reason to really leave the port on this one. Um, I would agree with you on that. I've been there several times. Just this last time is the first time I actually went into town. We're not um, feeding dogs the whole time. Again, we <laughs> spent a lot of the time looking for a store so we could feed the dogs and got stuck in the rain. <laughs> but there's, there's really no shopping down there, maybe like four or five little tiny huts. Um, and then you end up coming back to the port. So at this particular port, when you get off the cruise ship, there's Definitely stores right there. there. There's a giant Margaritaville with a giant pool that is free of charge. Right. And they have a DJ there. And they have that... Um, Yes, Lazy River, Wave Pool, they Surf have, Rider. They have a Surf Rider, um, and then they have horseback riding on the beach yeah. that you can do further down on the beach. They the, have the Jack Shack, which the, is the I think, one of entire length of the, of the port. There's a beautiful beach where the cruise ship is like right there. It's like a postcard. So you don't even have to eat at Margarita. You can just walk back on the ship and grab lunch. Um, about 100 yards down the beach is a place called the Jack Shack, which is the best place to eat and drink, in my opinion, anywhere in the Caribbean. The drinks are cheap. The jerk chicken is fantastic. It There's is. beach chairs for free that aren't mobbly crowded. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a... And it's only like 100 yards down the beach. It's not a long walk. About a football field. And they have um, two dogs there that are native part to the beach. of their logo and, and they are the sweetest animals you will ever meet and they just kind of wander around and do their thing and they're very friendly and 
And I actually have a 360 video on Grand Turk on my channel. I will link that down below as well in the next 24 hours when we get back to the studio. But yeah, if you have an opportunity to take a cruise to Grand Turk, it is one of the most beautiful places in the Caribbean and it's probably the cheapest place in the Caribbean because everything is right there at the foot of the cruise ship. You don't even have to buy lunch. You can just walk back on the cruise ship, have lunch and then walk right back off. Yeah. Um, what a beautiful place. They, they do have some things if you want to spend a little bit of money. Like I said, they do little have stores. the horseback riding. Um, they do have jet ski rentals. They do have like uh, snorkeling things you can do in a, as far as excursions and stuff like that. Here's but, one tip for you. Margarita's not cheap either, but the pool is free. Here, here's a tip for you too, when you go to the beach, which is right there at the port, you're going to see lots and lots of chairs. And those chairs are actually owned by the cruise line, and they are free. But for some reason, the port does allow the locals to go on there and yes. charge you $20. So if you're not careful, they will walk up to you and say, you owe me $20 for that chair. Let them know that you know that they're free. Um, we actually usually give them the 20 bucks because we kind of feel like, you know, they're there. They do maintain them. They put them out every morning. They take them up every night. They keep them clean. So if you feel they've done a good job and you don't want to argue with them, um, and it's really not an argument. They'll walk away once you tell them you know it's free. The, the 10 or $20 they're asking for, personally, I think they deserve it. Um, but they're not, it's not mandatory. Those chairs are free. Um, I think the ones with the umbrellas are $20, though. The one with that kind of an umbrella yeah. over top of you. Because um, you're, you're using their umbrella for that. One of the other things that I can t think to tell you about about this island is when you first come out of the duty shop, it's kind of like a town center. And if you were to walk straight, there's a little tiny, I believe it's like a little coffee shop. And that is the one place on that island that they do offer free internet that if you were needed it. I remember that because you needed it. Oh, actually in the port itself. <laughs> yes, in the yes. port itself. Um, it's not very far in at all. It's literally right, right there at the end, right there. across from the entrance. And if there's restrooms right there. That's the one store that they do offer. The only downside is the crew knows that as well. So it's usually it doesn't pretty work busy the fastest, there and it's not the fastest because a lot of people are using it. But there is free internet at that point. That's a very good point. Yes. Um, another thing I wanted to kind of give a shout out to is because a lot of people don't realize that if you go further to the right, you have um, that landing. I can't think of what it was called. The, the guy that crashed that. John Glenn. Yes. And you have that. You know, our senator. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I don't follow. also have like this giant fake whale that comes out of the sand. It's a really neat photo op and stuff over there. And, and there's a, another little restaurant kind of bar kind of thing over there. And they have some of the best conch fritters over there. Oh, yes. Very, very good. The little tiny bar restaurant type there. Mm -hmm. Well, I also want to talk about um, backing up a little bit um, Honduras. Honduras also has the chairlift that goes over to the private beach the Carnival owns as well. Um, you've never done the chairlift over there, but I did it on the last time. There's a 360 video on the channel um, that takes the chairlift. There's actually two. There's a 360 and a regular video that go over and explores that whole thing. So, and it's and the chair, while the sky ride does cost, I believe, ten dollars for the day, um, you can walk the path under the sky lift for free to get over there, and then the beach is free. There's actually another. Uh country that we completely skipped over and, and I realized that when somebody asked about Montego Bay but we got Montego Jamaica. Bay and Ocho Rios in Jamaica. We got remarried in Montego Bay overlooking the bay. We did um, for our 10 year. Um, Jamaica is beautiful but the people especially the people trying to sell you stuff can be rather pushy. Yes um, they tend to call women lady very loud and kind of a little annoyingly. And be careful with the taxi drivers. We had one literally almost abduct our children. <laughs> yes, and he is known as Mr. Clean over there. No, that's Mexico. No, they do it there too. <laughs> Thanks, I'm going to hear about that on my channel now. Thank you for that, honey. Oh, you know I love you. <laughs> Just for the record, she hates lady too, so you can put that all over the place. I so. do, I hate it. So, all right, I think we're done. Um, well, we didn't do Ocho Rios. Ocho Rios with has Duns, River, Duns Falls, River Falls. Which is um, a great, uh, like, uh, it's almost like a half a mile of waterfalls, but not so vertical that you can actually walk up the waterfall. Well, it depends on what side you do. There's a left side and the right side, and apparently the right side is a lot more they challenging and physical it. than the left side. And they do have people that are right there with you walking along the side. So if you do need Who'd assistance, love to try and sell you weed. they will help you, and they do try to sell you weed. I don't smoke weed, but they in, definitely offer it in there. Fact, which it, is weird because it's illegal there. It is, but yeah. w at one point we actually had a gentleman come up to us and they say, Hey, Mom, in the water. You, you, you want some weed? And they took out this giant baggie out of their pocket. 
and we were just we were you know flabbergasted that, that's, by that's it. the ironic <laughs> part about Jamaica. Everybody thinks of Jamaica and marijuana. It's like more legal in the United States now than it is in Jamaica. <laughs> I, I just find that a little ironic. Because, yeah, weed is actually illegal there, but you smell it everywhere you go. Um, we, uh, somebody is asking about Half Moon K. I don't believe that I have been there. I don't You know, really I've actually, actually never either. been there either, so I, I don't know. I know it's a beautiful place. Lots of people have told me how much they love it, but I've just never taken a cruise. Half Moon K is Carnival's private island. And uh, I, I've just never really, I don't know, we like going to countries. I don't want to be, I don't want to be stuck on a private island where the cruise line is <laughs> nickel and dime in you well, the whole time you're there, because... Nothing's really included there in your cruise fare, even though it's owned by the cruise Half line. Moon K. I made a Princess K. There's Princess K as well. Mm -hmm. Two different ones. That's nice. We good? I think that's All right, guys, I think yeah. we're done. So, again, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell notification. Click the join button and become one of our premium members. It supports our channel. And uh, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on your next cruise. Don't forget to get a t-shirt. They'll be uploaded on Monday. And I'll buy you a drink if I see you on board with it.